Yo, what's up my brother? In this video we're gonna talk about manipulation. Now manipulation is really interesting and it can be very insidious because a lot of times people don't realize they are being manipulative and you might find out that you're being manipulative as well. So in this video you're gonna learn more about this and if there's any kind of manipulation in a relationship, it has to fuck it go. Manipulation will destroy a relationship because it is based on insecurity. You feel that if for me to get what I need from this person, I have to manipulate them versus they would willingly give it to me because they care and they love about me. Now, a lot of people, again, they're doing this because they don't mean to do it. In childhood, maybe they had manipulative parents, maybe they didn't get their needs met and they had to do some sort of manipulation to get what they needed. We're gonna talk about this more in depth and you'll find that if you're in a relationship where your woman's being manipulative, you might not even notice it. It often makes you feel like you're the problem and you feel guilted or shamed like something's happening. You feel like you're walking on eggshells and the way that manipulation works is they make you doubt your own sense of self and your own perception of reality. So we're gonna dive into more here in this video. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray the Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. All right, gaslighting. Gaslighting is the big one. It's the one that's thrown around all the time. You hear people talking about gaslighting all the time. In fact, you hear everybody talking about narcissism and everything, and it always comes down to gaslighting. So what is it? What it means is, here's something that happened and I don't want you to believe that, I want you to believe something different. So in other words, like say your wife's flirting with another guy and it's obvious she's flirting with him and you say, hey, I don't like you flirt, why are you flirting with that guy? And she's like, you're just overreacting. You're just being sensitive. That guy's just a friend. And you're like, no, I fucking saw you flirting. I know what flirting looks like. And so what she's doing is she's trying to get you to doubt your own perception of reality. If you're not really clear on who you are and what you see, you're gonna doubt yourself. And then if they can get you to doubt yourself, then that's when they win. This isn't flirting, this is what I do when I flirt. And you're like, okay, well, maybe I'm wrong, okay. And then she's already got you. Or you could say, hey, I noticed you didn't go to the store. Maybe you're looking at her GPS. Say, you didn't go to the store, you went over here. She's like, I don't know what you're talking about. The GPS is just wrong. Or they'll just straight up lie about something that you definitely saw. She'll say, I never said that. You must be imagining things, you're crazy. You're just unstable. This game here, what she's doing, she's trying to get you to question your own reality, question your own eyes. It's this whole game of don't believe your own eyes, believe what I say. And when she does this and you start to doubt yourself, you fall prey to it. And then before you know it, she'll just keep working it and working it, which is the second part of gaslighting, which is the foot in the door technique, where if they can get you to believe this one little thing, then they'll just keep hammering at home until you believe the whole thing. It's kind of like give an inch, take a mile. So if she gets you to say, yeah, okay, well, maybe I was, she's like, yeah, see, it's not that. See, it's this other thing here. And then she just does it. Like, okay, I guess I'm wrong. And then you end up feeling like the idiot. I guess I, I, guess I was just being overly sensitive. I guess I shouldn't have come to, yeah, you just accuse me of things all the time. You just always accuse me. Like, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to accuse you. You know, I just, it just seemed like you were flirting with that guy. And see, now she slipped it around on you that you're the asshole, always accusing her, always being too sensitive, always being insecure when really what you did was you caught her actually flirting with the guy. And what we call this is manufactured jealousy. And what she did was she had a situation where you should have been jealous as a natural response to seeing your partner courting another person. And then she tells you that there's something wrong with that. It's like, no, you actually made, made a situation where I should have been jealous and then I was jealous and you gaslighted me about it. And then you made it to be my fault. Like I'm crazy, like I don't know what I'm talking about and that I am now the bad guy for bringing up this whole point. And so you're gonna find that manipulation constantly does this to you over and over and over again. It keeps you questioning your reality, questioning yourself. And you'll find this people who are unsure of themselves, insecure in themselves are easily manipulated. And so the first way to get through manipulation, again, is to get clear and strong in who you are. Playing the victim. So one of the biggest traits or one of the biggest cards that women like to play is, oh, woe is me, help me, I'm, I'm a helpless little damsel in distress. This is the biggest manipulation tactic that women use. Why? Because they're taught to do this and men are taught to save them. Oh, I can't open this jar. She probably can't, or maybe she can, but she's like, I need a guy to help me. Or they'll tell you, oh, you're so smart, you know all these things. And so what she's doing is she's playing the victim. Even though it's a compliment to you that you're smart, what she's doing is she's saying, I'm dumb, I need a guy to help me. 
I need a guy to take me and guide me through life because I can't handle life. This is manipulation. A lot of women subtly do this, especially if she's a beautiful woman that easily takes advantage of men all the time. They will play this game all the time. I can't pay my bills. I need, I just, my boss is such a jerk and he won't give me overtime. Let's ignore the fact that she just shows up late half the time and he's, she's on the verge of being fired, but her boss doesn't like her. She will do this to you. She'll play this victim, play this helpless damsel in distress. Like, oh, the world's just happening to me. Why is everything happening to me this way? Oh, man. And so this, what this does is elicits your intrinsic nature to try to save the woman. Men have this in their DNA that they want to help and save their woman. And so you have to realize that she's a grown ass fucking woman. She can handle her own business. In fact, her complaining about it, her being a victim should be a turnoff to you. A woman that you respect, a woman that you care about, will never play the victim in this way. My wife doesn't play the victim. My wife takes full responsibility for how she feels and acts in any moment because that's a responsible adult thing to do. It's not responsible to blame me for how she's feeling. That's ridiculous. You're making me angry. No, you're choosing to be angry based on the input that you got. You saw this thing, somebody said something, you chose to take that a certain way. You chose that position of perspective. Don't allow victim behavior in your life. If your wife goes going, oh, I just can't, whatever. It's like, yeah, well, it's tough. I hear you. I feel you. But you got to handle it. Because you can't save her. In fact, you saving her. I have a client on the coaching call last week, and this is the second time we talked on the group coaching call. He was talking, he has this wife, and she has depression and anxiety, and she's taking all this medication for it and all this stuff. And her biggest thing was this game here, playing the victim. So she's not going to come out and just attack him. What she does is like, oh, I can't find these files upstairs. I said, do you know where the file, does she, could she get them herself? He's like, yeah, probably. Why does she need your help to go get the files upstairs? He's like, well, I don't know. I was like, because what she's doing, she's playing this subtle game of being the victim and getting you to do shit for her. One little thing leads to another little thing leads to another little thing. And she's reinforcing this behavior that she's helpless and she needs you to help her do everything because she's depressed and she can't get up and get around and do stuff. And you're becoming a crutch for her. And so you, as a man, don't allow this. She's like, well, I don't know, I'm feeling bad. Can you call me later? It's like, I can call you at 5.30. You want me to call you at 5.30? I'm like, dude, don't do that. Tell her when you're done, you call me. You call me when you're done. I'm not gonna try to like insinuate myself into your life so that I can save you and hopefully you'll accept it. That's insane. No, if you want my attention, you call me. I said, you tell her how you want to operate. Don't apply this victim game. And we went back and forth. He was arguing with me with this because he's so been trained intrinsically over the last 25 years with this woman that he just, just all his behavior was naturally this way. And I was stuck in a relationship like this for seven years back in college where this woman was helpless and she had me doing fucking everything for her. And little did I know that the more I did for her, the worse she got. And I was like, she just needs more help. She, no, she doesn't need fucking help. She needs the crutch pulled out from under her so she can help herself. Guilt tripping. This is the favorite of mothers. Guilt your kids into doing what you want them to do so they'll be compliant little children. My mom was the queen of the fucking guilt trip. So much so that a guilt trip is like water on my back for a duck. Like, I don't give a fuck if you guilt trip me. In fact, if you guilt trip me, it pisses me off because I know what you're doing. Because guilting is pretty much saying, you should hate yourself for the person you're being. Who does that to somebody? Who says that to somebody? Who says that to a child? It's insane. It's toxic and it's uncalled for. So anytime somebody guilts you for something, just tell them to fuck off. Or you just call it out directly. You're trying to guilt trip me and I don't appreciate it. I'm not going to respond to your guilt tripping. I'm not going to feel bad about myself for the things that you want me to do. So anytime you start feeling guilty by what they're saying, realize it's a guilt trip. And you can usually sense these guilt trips. Like, if you really loved me, you would do this. If you were a good husband, you would do this. If, well, you don't actually care about me because you won't give me any gifts. Really, we're gonna feel we're gonna do this? That's pretty fucking entitled. There's always this comparison, right? Like, oh, if you loved me, you wouldn't work so much. It's like, no, I love you, and I also need to work so much. Like, I gotta do both of these things. Now, if we wanna have a conversation about how much time I'm spending with you and how much presence, that's different. But trying to make me feel bad for doing the thing I know I need to do and I must do is, is not helpful, right? She's putting you between these two things. Well, I don't want you to go to the gym because you're probably gonna go look at these other women. Because if you really went, you would just work out at home. It's like, okay, let's not play that game. So anytime somebody tries a guilt trip, you just shut it down. You don't need to feel guilty. Now, if you did something on your own 
and you feel guilty about it, just make the pivot, don't talk about it, and then just let it go. Because again, guilting is just self-flagellation. So just stop doing that. You don't really need to feel guilty. Just make the pivot and move on. Withholding information or affection. So in other words, getting half-truths. Like you get a half-truth about something and then you find out later on there's more to it. Or she just gives you the silent treatment completely. So in other words, let's say, hey, you were flirting with that guy. What's going on with that? She's like, no, I wasn't. I, don't, I just met him or whatever. And then you find out later that she's been talking to this guy for three weeks. Then you find out later that he actually works with her. And they've been talking for two months. And then you find out that, oh, they're just friends. And then you find out later that, no, they're not just friends. They've been hooking up. And that's why you felt that pit in your stomach when you saw them talking, because you knew exactly what the fuck was going on. And so this half-truths is a game of manipulation, because they don't want you to know the whole truth, because they knew that you wouldn't like it. And so a person who actually loves you is going to tell you the whole truth. They're going to safeguard their relationship. They're going to safeguard truth and honesty because they know that any kind of honesty or any kind of breaking of truth, breaking of trust, is going to set the relationship back massively. In fact, it can take years to, to fix broken trust. And so somebody who actually loves you is going to safeguard that. They're not going to allow the trust to be broken at all. And then usually with a manipulator, the trust will get broken and then they'll try to guilt you into not trusting them. They'll try to shame you into not trusting them. They'll play the victim for you not trusting them. Well, you just never trust me, so I can never open up. Well, you just don't trust me, so I'm not feeling that's into you right now. You just don't trust me so that I feel... And so it's like, okay, great. Let's forget the fact that you just did a bunch of untrustable shit. Shouldn't trust you. It'd be foolish to trust you. I'm not gonna trust you. Why don't you try being trustable for a while and build that trust back? That's on you. You should build that up, not me. How about I trust you when I see that you're trustable? And so I see this kind of crap with marriage counselors all the time. It's like, no, your problem, dude, is that you just don't trust your wife. You just have to trust her that she's going to. It's like, no, that's stupid. Don't tell a guy to trust his wife when she cheated on him. That's like putting the fox in the hen house. You know she's going to do it again. You're just giving her more runway to fucking cheat on him. Love bombing. So love bombing is this situation where you first meet a woman and she's just like everything you want. In fact, she lays it on thick. She tells you you're the best thing she's ever met. She's the best dude she's ever met. You're better than all her exes. And that she's so happy to have finally found like the one, the guy that is ever, the sex is the best. Everything you do is awesome. You are like a hero to her. Not only that, she wants to move fast because you were so awesome. Why would we wait? Why would we wait? Let's just get together. Let's move in together. Let's get married. Let's have kids. And it's only been like six months. Or maybe she's talking about this in the first month being with you. This is behavior from an insecure person. A secure person is going to want to vet you out for a while. They're going to want to make sure that you are who you say you are. They're not going to just be all in and just live on the benefit of the doubt that you are as amazing as she thinks you are. Because it takes time to get to know somebody. In the beginning, it's easy to, to fake who you are. It's easy to fake it for a while, but then time and consistency shows exactly how the person is. And love bombing means they're trying to hide something else. And oftentimes, they don't necessarily mean to be love bombing. They're insecure, so they're like, oh, this is the guy. And they're actually in love with the fantasy of who you are, and so they're just playing to that fantasy. And you, as a guy, if you're really insecure and you don't get a lot of attention from women, you're going to think this is amazing. You're going to feel like, finally, a woman gets me. Finally, a woman's everything that I want. And really what she's doing is she's got this idea of who you are in her head, and she's playing to that. She's playing to the fantasy because she doesn't believe that you would actually love the real person underneath that. So she plays this character to get you. And the thing is, you're just John doing John shit. So eventually, John, the real John, who does not match her head fantasy, comes out, and she sees that the two are not the same, and then it ends up with the second stage, which is devaluation. She starts saying shit like, you're not who you said you were. You're not the kind of guy I fell in love with. Why, and she tries to tell you all these things that you're doing wrong, hoping that you'll change, and so then you do. You're like, okay, I'll change. You keep trying to change, keep trying to change, keep trying to change, but you can't change to be that fantasy in her head. One, she never disclosed it, and it was fake to begin with. And so this is usually the place that you come to whenever you're dealing with somebody with a personality disorder. Like these ones where the person's like highly emotional and highly emotionally dysregulated. They just get this fantasy in their head and they live in this land of delusion. They, you get wrapped into it. You think, what am I doing wrong? The thing is, you're not doing anything wrong. 
They've concocted this whole world in their mind, and they're trying to get you to live up to it. You can't live up to it because you don't know the rules of the game. And so they tell you some weird rules, but you follow those rules, and it doesn't seem to work because all it does is show you that you're weak and insecure, that you'll do anything for this person, even devalue yourself. And then before you know it, she just leaves you for some other guy. And so keep that in mind. This devaluation game, this love bombing game, this is something to be very worried about. This is why you take it slow. And guys generally fall in love faster than women fall in love with guys. And this is because, and this is how they take advantage of you. So when this happens, slow your fucking game down. Slow it down to months, even a couple of years before you make any big decisions with her, especially if she's pushing hard in the beginning. What you'll find is that she'll lose her mind. She can't handle it. She can't handle you taking it slow. She'll start getting insecure. She'll start attacking you. And then when that happens, you just let her go. If you're confused, if you're getting manipulated, you feel like you are and you're not sure, go talk to somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. Send me a comment here or come join us in the Broken a Badass program or maybe seek a, a counselor that might understand manipulation and personality disorders. That might help you very much. You could probably watch more videos like this. But the worst thing that you can do is sit in your head and ruminate and wonder if this is actually being manipulated. If you're wondering, then you need to go talk to somebody else because your perspective, again, your gut's going to lie to you. And so you got to look at the data, look at outside perspectives, get an objective opinion about what's actually going on. And just realize when you tell this person or you're seeking this help, be as objective and factual and accurate as possible. Try to take your bias out of it. And you're not going to be able to completely do it. Whenever anybody tells a story, there's always a bias, a bias in their favor when they tell the other person because they want to look good. So you want to recognize the fact that when you tell a story about your spouse or your significant other, you're going to put a bias or a spin on it. Do your best not to do this. Be objective and factual in the information that you give to the person, the expert that you're trying to talk to. And then they can give you a much more accurate perspective. All right, so how do we protect ourselves against manipulation? A lot of people say, trust your gut. I say, bullshit. Do not trust your gut. The manipulator is highly skilled in manipulating your emotions, which is part of your gut. No, trust your head. Watch what you see. Watch what you see. The data. Follow the data. So if one day she's doing this, the next day she's doing that, notice that there's a discrepancy between the two. Don't follow your gut. Follow the data. Because if you're a guy who's been manipulated and you've been trauma wounded by being betrayed in the past, your gut's going to send up a lot of false positives. You're going to freak out any time your wife leaves the house. So trust the data. Watch what you see, not what she says. Watch what she does, not what she says. And if you do this, and you log this, you will see that there's probably a lot of lies going on. And if you see a bunch of lies, in fact, if you see any lies in a relationship, realize that you're with somebody who thinks lying to you is okay, and that's probably going to be the end of it. My wife doesn't lie to me. How do I know? Because I can pull out her lies if she did. I can see it. But she doesn't want to lie to me. Why? She protects the relationship. She doesn't want to break my trust. Because she's seen that I've been cheated on in the past. She knows the vocation that I'm in. Helping guys move past betrayal situations. It'd be foolish for her to lie to me. I'm going to be extra sensitive about it. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to hammer that shit. I'm not going to allow that kind of crap in my relationship. On the flip side, I'm not going to lie to her either. Because I don't want to be a fucking hypocrite. And so in this place, do not trust your gut. Follow the data. Set boundaries. Get clear on what you will and will not accept. And as soon as you see somebody manipulating you, call it out. This will not stand when you're interacting with me. We do not manipulate here in this relationship. You do not guilt me. You do not shame me. You don't get to hit me. You don't even get to play hit me when you're angry. Set clear boundaries. Do not allow her to do these things. Now, everybody's going to have some tendencies. But if you set this clear that this shit doesn't stand, this aggression, then she will either button it up, or she'll try again in a couple of days. If she tries again in a couple of days, you have no choice but then to end it. Because this shows you somebody who wants to push your boundaries. What can I get away with? What can I get away with? You don't want to be with a woman who's trying to get away with shit. You want to be with a woman who cares about you and wants to help you and please you. If you're with somebody who's trying to get away with shit, just realize you're always going to be fighting this get away with shit bullshit for the rest of your life. And it becomes exhausting. And because it becomes exhausting, you'll never actually trust her, which means you'll never be able to fall into deep spiritual intimacy with her. Why? Because she's trying to get away with shit. She's trying to fuck around. That's not a partner. That's somebody who wants to play power games. She's also going to try to rope you into her drama. All this victimhood and all this shit that's going on. Don't play into it. You are not the hero. You are not the savior. You are not the white knight. 
Remember, the princess does not want to be with the white knight. The white knight dies in service of the princess. Then she goes and marries a fucking king. Don't be the white knight. That guy always falls on his sword trying to save the princess because she created a bunch of bullshit. He's trying to save her from the shit that she created. Why would you be with somebody who's creating all this fucking drama and has bad luck following him around everywhere? Don't. Be with somebody who creates harmony and peace and has luck and prosperity and manifests awesome things in her life. That's the kind of person you want to be with because you want a healthy and harmonious home. If you have to come home and solve all her fucking drama all the time, just realize that you'll never be able to solve it because she's constantly creating it. Manipulation can be hard to spot, mainly because people don't know what to look for. But once you know what to look for, it starts to become glaringly obvious what's happening in your life. And then the next step is always the hardest, which is stopping it. Because stopping it's going to mean you're going to have a collision. It means you're going to have to argue with this person. It means you're going to set boundaries. You're going to put your foot down. You're going to have to say no. You're going to have to stop it. And it even might mean you're going to have to kick this person out of your life. Even if it's your wife. Even if it's one of your parents. Even if it's your best friend. Even if it's a business partner. And so a lot of times people don't want to look at this game manipulation because they don't want to deal with the consequences of knowing what they're, that they're getting manipulated. And then when they finally do, and they finally say something about it to the other person, the other person deflects and gaslights and manipulates more to try to make the guy feel guilty for even bringing it up. And so it can be this slippery place. And so for you, as a powerful man, you have to stand true in who you are. And don't doubt yourself. And just, you're going to have to have consequences for it. You're going to have consequences for the manipulative behavior. And remember, consequences have teeth. There's an actual repercussion, not a, hey man, stop that. That is not a consequence. That is a plea. That's a request for stopping. That does not demonstrate power. Manipulators manipulate because they can. They manipulate because it works. And so as long as it works and as long as they can with you, they're going to keep doing it. And all you getting upset and angry and trying to plead with them is not going to change anything. In fact, it just shows them that it's working and they're going to probably double down. So if you want to deal with manipulation, you've got to nip that shit in the bud and kick them out of your life. That's the only way you can get it to work. So if you're dealing with a manipulative partner and you want to see if they're actually a narcissist, watch this video right here. Because if you're dealing with a narcissist, unfortunately, it cannot be helped, it cannot be saved, and you need to know sooner rather than later.